Hello everyone and welcome to the Birding Life blog, um, or should I say blog, because this one is a little bit different. I think this is the first time we're doing just a video that's going to be posted on the blog and I think the YouTube channel. So my name is Luca Tomlinson and I'm one of the Birding Life ambassadors and um, yeah, today we've got a quite an interesting video that, that Adam asked me to do um, and it's going to be an editing tutorial. Well, not necessarily an editing tutorial, but I will just be going through my my basic editing process. So what I do on most of my images um, in the most simple way possible. So this was one of my favorite images that I actually captured this December in the Umschlange Lagoon Nature Reserve in uh, just outside of Durban. So um, a lovely red cap robin chat that was actually just above um, a nest on the ground. So it was very confiding, and yeah, I doubt I'd ever get a, a photo of a red cap robin chat this, this um, find it this easy again. So, so this is the original image, and then we'll be trying to turn it into this, which is the final product. So, if I just go back there, um, hang on, I've lost. It. Okay, there we go. So if you can, look, if you see here, this image is very, very noisy. Um, it was in very bad lights. If I just check over here, yeah, ISO 5000. So, but overall, it isn't a bad image. It was captured on a on a Canon EOS R10. So, overall, not bad. Um, the noise level isn't isn't too bad, but it is still pretty bad. So, we're going to be fixing that in the video, and yeah, I'm turning it into this this picture over here. So. So first things first, obviously, oh, and uh, let me just mention that this is in Adobe Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic. So this is just the standard Lightroom on desktop. Um, but all, all the editing functions are exactly the same as Lightroom Classic. Um, Lightroom Classic just has a few extras, but won't be using the, any of those in this video. So don't worry about that. Everything works exactly the same as in Lightroom Classic. So... Let's start over here on the right hand side on the basic editing. What I like to do first is, is crop the image. So I don't like cropping it after I've done some um, some edits because it just really confuses me. I like to just have this get this out of the way first. So if we just bring this out here, just get a nice rule of thirds going a little bit. The bird's looking right in the frame. A little bit more. Just leave a little bit of space open. Yeah, that looks good to me. All right, so now we've got the cropping out of the way. I think I like that cropping. Now we're just going to be do some basic adjustments. So the highlights I usually bring down quite a bit, almost to seven between seventy and eighty, because um, I don't really like harsh highlights. It just flattens out the image a bit. But we will be fixing that later. So just bring down the harsh highlights um, quite a bit. Depends on the image, but for this one, seventy-five is good. Um, and then white, we'll just add a little bit of white, um, just to bring a little bit of contrast back into the image. And what I normally like to do with the blacks in all of my images, um, not all of them, but a lot of them, a lot of the um, bird images, what I like to do is bring these blacks up quite a bit. So not a lot of people really know what's going on here. But when you increase these blacks, basically what you're doing is the dark black parts of the image, you're actually lightening them. And making the image flatter so yeah, I normally bring them up quite a bit um, between 50 and 60 so I think 60 might be good here so as you can see it's it really softens the image it gives that that nice soft dreamy feel um, I see around the bird in the background um, it does flatten it a little bit but don't worry we'll fix that later so a co exposure I think is good we might we can actually bring up this exposure a little bit it is a little bit dark I think 28 plus 28 is good for now 0.28 um, and then the cone, tone curve I normally just do a, a standard small s curve just to bring a little bit of contrast back into the image so this is one of the main ways you bring that contrast back into the image I think as you can see it makes the colors pop and you can see the highlights coming out again. So I think I'm going to put that exposure down, back down. Um, I think there's all right. We'll see how how we go. I might change it later. Temperature I think is is good. 
it was set at shade uh, it's quite warm so I think that's all right vibrant I normally increase a little bit saturation as well um, just to add it a little bit more pop but I think this image is quite well saturated already and then with the color sliders the individual color sliders um, what I normally do is bring down the blues unless the subject is specifically blue or I want to keep a blue sky and so on but I normally decrease the blues because blue is one of the most common colors that you get in chromatic aberration I don't think there's much chromatic aberration in this image but I just bring it down anyways. Um, purple purple and pink are often also in chromatic aberration as well as green, um, but obviously this picture, the background is green, so we don't have to worry about that. All right, so I think color is good. Um, hue and saturation, I, I don't really change um, unless I'm trying a more creative edit, but for this one, I'm trying to keep it natural, so that's all we need there. Effects. So I'll normally add a slight vignette just to just to bring the focus to the middle. But when I'm keeping it natural, uh, I don't add much vignettes. I normally when I add a heavy vignette, it's normally for your more mute, moody edits, um, obviously because it makes the edges a lot darker. But for this, I'll just add five. And then if you bring this midpoint slider to the left here, that's actually going to make the vignette come closer into the middle. So. I normally do take this to the left a little bit, depending on the image. Obviously, my subject here is a bit to the left, so I don't want to bring it down too much. But uh, right about there is all right. And then feather. I always feather them in yet, which makes the transition a bit more smooth um, around the edges and the dark areas. So I always think uh, feather all the way up around 80, between 80 and 90 is all right. Which obviously just smooths it out and makes it less, less apparent. Um, sharpening, I do sharpen, but I'm going to leave the sharpening for now because I'm going to first do the denoise and then we can do the sharpening after that. So, and then obviously at the bottom, your optics, remove chromatic aberration and enable lens corrections are always ticked as by default for me. Um, obviously you have to select your lens profile, but yeah, those are your two standard things that you would always do. And then... A very a very cool feature that Lightroom has actually just added is this lens blur um, early access so it's actually still in testing phase but it's actually awesome this this feature and what it does is you can it basically uses AI to blur the background so it detects the depth in the image so it will like see okay this is this is quite sharp that's that's much less sharp in the background let's blur that more so it's very cool AI technology. If you click here, apply, see here it says estimating depth. Um, let's just wait here. See what it does. This background is pretty blurred. It is an f5.6 lens, so it's not as blurred as an f2.8. So a little bit of blur could actually help you. As you see, so that actually made a big difference. Right now it's set at 50, right in the middle there. And if I just bring this across, you can see how it changes there. See there. I won't take it all the way because you don't want to make it too apparent and too smooth because then the image will start looking a bit fake. But you can see here, there we go. I normally keep it left of the slider. Um, I think 30 is alright for this image. That looks very good. Um, yeah, I think 30 looks good. And also an added bonus is when you do this blur, obviously you see it completely wipes out the noise in the background. So you don't have to worry about that. But then of course, this tree and the bird is the is obviously the subject, so it doesn't blur that, and so obviously you've still got the noise here. It I can say it does do a very good job of uh, around the edges. I'm just gonna see here around this head. You see there, if when I pull it, you see it is starting to blur a bit of those feathers on the edge there. But I think, you see that feather there, but I think if we, I'm not sure it is taking off that feather there. So I think it honestly depends on the image. Um, it will get better over time, obviously, because it's still early access. But I think um, it is kind of affecting these feathers on the side so I think I'll, I'll I'll skip this lens blur in this image so now now comes the exciting part obviously we want to get rid of all of this noise so 
Lightroom has this this denoise feature, which uh, which came out recent, fairly recently, I'd say, um, not very recently, but this also works on day, um, AI technology. So if you go here, click on denoise, it will come up with the the preview. Okay. Okay, and then it's going to come up with a small block, which is block, which is basically the sample area, which is going to show you more or less what's what the final image is going to look like. So it always automatically sets to 50, but you can move the slider and see. Obviously, this is all the way zero, all the way up to 100. I normally, obviously, again like the blur, don't go all the way to 100 because then it starts looking a bit fake. Um, you can tell something's been done for it done to it so I normally actually keep it around 50 I think 50 is pretty good um, right over there and then just keep all of the standard raw details take super resolution we're not really interested in that and then click enhance and now we just need to wait for it to to do its thing um, depending on your laptop um, or the device you're editing on it can take a while it is pretty pretty power and GPU intensive this this denoise feature um, but it is very powerful so it depends on the laptop mine normally takes a few minutes um, but it can take up to 10 15 even 20 minutes but it's definitely worth it though so you'll see now once it's done and then after that I'll add the the few last few finishing touches to the image While we wait, I'll just have a look if there's any any spots or anything I could remove. I don't think I see anything I'd want to remove here. I think it's alright. Um, otherwise, we could have used the healing feature. Um, I sometimes do do that. But I think this image is pretty good. So let's just wait for this, this denoise to do its thing. And then we'll add the last few finishing touches. Okay, we're almost there. A few more seconds. I can hear my computer's fan going on here. <laughs> Pretty intensive, as I said. Okay. Okay, there we go. So what it's going to do is it's going to create another DNG, which is another, basically, basically it's another extension for a raw file, so it keeps all the info in the image, um, and it's going to make another image here, and you'll see it has this little, this little 2 next to it, which means it's the second image in the stack. So as you can see, it's awesome, it's taken out most of the noise, uh, as, as you know, as you saw, I kept it on 50, so there is a little bit of noise, but it's it's much better than the original image as you can see here very sharp very sharp very nice very nice okay so just for the last few things now once once the denoise is done what I like to do is create a subject mask 
So what I'll do here is go on to here, click on subject, so it's going to auto detect the subject. If it doesn't um, detect the subject automatically very well, then what I'll do is just do a manual brush and brush over the subject, which obviously is very time consuming, so it's not ideal. But let me just have a look here if it's selected the subject. Uh, subject. Right. There we go. So that did it very well. As you can see, if I hover over it here, it shows it in red. That's selected the, the robin very well. All right. So what I normally do is not much. I'll just come over to the whites here and increase them a bit depending on the subject just to bring a bit of brightness and pop to the subject. Normally around 10. I think 10 is okay. And then the blacks, I'll decrease to obviously um, even out those whites and add a bit of contrast because earlier we increased the blacks to flatten out and soften the image now we're just bringing some detail back into the subject so blacks are blacks are very sensitive I, I would say more sensitive than the whites so I normally don't bring it down as much as the whites so maybe maybe minus seven or or we could actually go even more maybe minus ten I think that's all right um, whites we could actually increase more up to sixteen okay then the texture I normally do the texture, clarity, and sharpness to bring out the texture and sharpness in the subject. But texture, I would, I don't, I don't like to to overdo it on the texture or the sharpness or the clarity, any of these, because obviously it doesn't create a very appealing image if you overdo it. So normally around 10, not over 10 for both of them, um, texture and clarity, and then sharpness, also not too much, maybe up to around 50. 50 is normally my go-to sharpness value and that's basically all I do th to the subject now I just go back to the edit see if I want to change anything um, I think it's a little bit we've added that pop to the subject I still think I could increase these blacks slightly more to soften the image out even a little bit more I think up to 70 for this image actually looks very nice so I think that's it for this for this edit. Um, as you can see, let's go to this image. So this is two, and this is one. Now, if we hold this, um, click on this, see the original. So we've basically gone from that to that. A lot sharper. The subject pops and soften the background. So that's basically my my go-to natural edit. That's how I flow through the image. Nothing too hectic, just to bring out the subject and uh, make it a more appealing image. So that's my that's my standard natural edit. Um, obviously, it all depends on the image, but that's basically my workflow. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog, should I say? And I hope there will be many more. I'm sure there will be many more in the future. Um, if you guys have any, if the viewers have any suggestions or recommendations. You can obviously email the birding life, but that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and see you next time.